Which do you think might be the sportiest SUV out of the new supercharged V8 Range Rover Sport and Porsche's mighty KN Turbo? That is exactly what we went to Brands Hatch to find out. It's just a monster in a straight line, the Porsche. It's outrageous. Oh, but there is quite a lot of, quite a lot of <laughs> inertia ultimately that you've got to try and remain in control of. I know it weighs what it does, but it stops really well too. And it has proper handling grip and handling balance it just feels like a kind of sports car but in a lounge chair version of it it's just brilliant it's fantastic for doing this sort of thing there's just so much grip and composure the Range Rover does not have anything like as sporty a tires on it it's still oh no straight away it feels like a ship at sea it sounds nice though it sounds great there just isn't the body control or the steering precision. And okay, this weighs a couple of hundred kilograms more than the Porsche, but it feels as if it weighs about a ton more, to be honest. It defies the laws of physics, does the KN Turbo. And there is an awful lot that the Range Rover Sport could do to learn from it. Okay, so that's one nil to the Porsche. No big surprises about that. There's such a massive difference. The Porsche destroys the Range Rover around Brands Hatch. So now I think we need to go to the other end of the extremes and go off-road. This might well be where the Range Rover Sport gets its own back on the KN Turbo. Because this is a pretty serious off-road course. The tyres of the Range Rover Sport are just so much better sorted for doing this sort of stuff than the Michelin Pilot Sports on that KN. Oh my God, that's not a puddle, it's a pond. I've got no idea how deep this is. You're never going to get through that. Um, there's a KN Turbo still behind me. You know what the really weird thing is? You're just in this beautifully luxurious, calming, lounge-like environment, <laughs> and yet you're just in the middle of a forest, and it just the environment just looks terrifying. It's through. It has got through that. If that KN Turbo, it is. It's doing it. It's followed me. That's incredible. As ever, the Range Rover is amazing off-road, but then the Porsche is pretty incredible in the mud too. So I think we'll have to call that a dead heat. And finally then, what are they like on-road? It is very, very close between these two, we think. Not just me, but other people that have driven them as well. The thing is, and the reason why it's so close, is because when the Range Rover is being a Range Rover, i.e. soft, comfortable, luxurious, and ideally with a V8 engine, that is when it hits the bullseye. But when it tries to be something it isn't, when it tries to be a bit of a Porsche, I'm not sure it's just as good a car. I think it looks lovely, the Range Rover, but actually, as a thing to drive, it's not as good as when it's just a regular Range Rover. Result? Do you know, I think this is an honourable draw. If you really want the fastest, the maddest, the most powerful SUV, you buy the Porsche. If you want a bit more luxury out of your sporty SUV, you buy the Range Rover. And I think it really is as simple as that. It's up to your personal values as to which one you go for. Even so, the Range Rover Sport, what a lovely 